dari kota Yogyakarta. Inilah Borobudur Writers and Cultural Festival 2022 dengan tema Membaca Ulang Pemikiran Haryani Santiko Durga di Jawa, Bali, dan India. Selamat pagi. Semoga semua makhluk hidup berbahagia. May we all be in light and love. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Kita jumpa dalam acara tahunan meditasi yang diselenggarakan oleh Borobudur Writers and Culture Festival yang tahun ini adalah yang ke-11 pada tahun 2022. Dan ini adalah hari meditasi yang ketiga. Meditasi adalah kegiatan lazim yang dilakukan di seluruh Nusantara dengan bermacam ragam pola. Setiap tahun kami mengajak Bapak dan Ibu memulai hari yang padat dan mencerahkan dalam Borobudur Writers and Cultural Festival untuk duduk sebentar, membersihkan hati dan pikiran dalam kegiatan bermeditasi bersama. Melakukan meditasi tidak mengganggu kita dalam menjalankan ibadah kita masing-masing. Bahkan para pembimbing kita dalam melakukan meditasi secara teratur mengatakan itu jalan yang sempurna untuk membantu kita menemukan kehusukan dalam ritual kita. Hari ini pembimbing meditasi kita adalah Yenla Bikuni, Dr. Karma Soma. Beliau adalah uh, berkedudukan di San Diego University. Dan sebelum kita mulai latihan, rekan saya Yudi Bidiantoro akan menyampaikan biodata singkat dari Ibu Ibu Karma. Silahkan, Mas Yudi. Venerable Karma Alexei Somo, is a professor of Buddhist studies at the University of San Diego, the city of Buddhist thoughts and culture. Living in Buddhism and dying death and social justice. He holds a, a PhD in comparative philosophy from the University of Hawaii at Manoa. It research interest in women in, in Buddhism, death and dying, Buddhist feminist ethics, Buddhism and biotech techniques, religion and politics, Buddhist social ethics, and Buddhist transnationalism. He integrates scholarship and social activity to the Satya Dita International Association of Buddhist Women, Satya Dita Hawaii, and Jam Yang Foundation an innovative education project for women in developing countries. Uh, her publication includes women in Buddhist trans tradition, Buddhist feminism and femininity into jaws of Yama, Buddhism, bioethics, and death, and numerous edited works on women in Buddhism. Silakan lihat hmm. demikian biodata singkat dari Venerable Karma Lexi Somo. <coughs> yes, good morning everyone. Greetings from San Diego, California, where it's almost evening here. So I'm very happy to join in this wonderful, wonderful celebration. And I applaud everyone who had a part in making it possible. I know you've all been working very hard. Today, I'd like to talk to you about loving kindness. We live in a crazy time. And unfortunately, there's a lot of violence and unhappiness and even cruelty in the world today. So what can we do about it? How do we fortify ourselves so that we don't get depressed and feel defeated in the face of all that's going on in the world today. Well, in my experience, I've been a nun for about 45 years now. I'm American, but I went to India for many years and studied with Tibetan masters mostly, but also in Burma and Taiwan and Korea and other wonderful places. And um, I was also very fortunate to stay in Java for about six months when we held our Sakadita conference there. 
in 2017, 2015. So it feels like coming home to be with you today. Um, the topic that I want to talk about is transforming ourselves and the world through loving kindness. And it's not just about words, it's also about practice, about meditation, about transforming our minds. So I've come to think more and more that the most important thing in the world is love. Um, this is not original. All religious traditions talk about love. All religious founders and teachers talk about love. Uh, but how do we actually develop it in our hearts and minds? Um, how do we overcome our own feelings of selfishness and sometimes our anger and frustration? Um, we really need to cultivate loving kindness in our hearts. And for that, we need a practice. Meditation practice is the best way to cultivate this virtue of loving kindness. And in the Buddhist tradition, I'm speaking from the Buddhist tradition, but I think it's rather universal. We want to develop loving kindness, not only for our friends and our own loved ones. We want to develop loving kindness for everyone. Now, this may sound pretty radical. How can we develop loving kindness for those who harm us, for our enemies, those who gossip about us or cheat us or abandon us? How do we, how do, we do that? Well, the idea is to develop loving kindness equally for all sentient beings, all living beings, we could say, but in the Buddhist tradition, we're talking about beings with a mind. And the question of whether trees have minds or not, we can leave it open, we can explore it. But the idea here is to develop loving kindness for all living beings. So I'd like to start out with a meditation practice to help us cultivate this attitude of loving kindness toward all living beings. We'll integrate meditation today, and I'd like you to meditate with me. So the Dalai Lama often says that love is instinctual for living beings. He gives as his evidence the fact that a newborn baby will automatically reach out with love toward its mother. So he believes that it's Loving kindness is natural for all of us, that it's our true state of mind to be loving. But sometimes we forget. So here's how we cultivate loving kindness for all living beings. We imagine in the space in front of us, in our mind's eye, three people. Someone that we love very dearly, someone that we really don't like, have problems with. And on the right, a perfect stranger. So three different beings, the friend, the enemy, and the stranger. One by one, we practice generating love, loving kindness for each one of them. And in the end, we send loving kindness to all living beings equally, our friends, our enemies, and perfect strangers. Okay, so for those who have meditated before, please take any position that you feel comfortable with. If you haven't meditated a lot, you might want to try either sitting on the floor on a cushion or in a chair. Both are fine. If you sit on the floor, you don't have to sit in a full lotus. It can be just a comfortable, easy posture. If you're sitting in a chair, it's important to have both feet flat on the floor. And in both cases, it's important to have your back straight. When your back is straight, then the nerve impulses up your spine are straight. When the nerve impulses are straight, then the mind becomes straight. This is the idea. We try to make our spine straight our shoulders level, we tuck our chin in just a bit. That helps to keep our spine straight. 
We put our tongue on the upper palate with our mouth closed, breathing through the nose, if possible, and with our eyes just slightly open, closed about 90%, open about 10%. So please find a comfortable position and check your posture. Make sure you're completely straight and completely relaxed. Straight and relaxed. To make sure our body is relaxed, we can do a body scan, beginning from the top of our head and moving slowly down our face, our neck, shoulders, back, chest, arms, hands, our waist, hips, thighs, calves, ankles, and feet, all the way down to our toes. Make sure everything is completely relaxed. Be aware of your breathing. Breathing in and out naturally, comfortably, following the breath's own natural rhythm. Then right at the beginning, we want to check our intention. What is our motivation for meditation? Are we learning to meditate in order to be happier, more successful, less stressful? Well, that's all good. <clears throat> that's fine. But a higher motivation would be in order to purify our minds of all negativities so that we can be of greater service to the world, to human society, our friends and family, of course, but to a wider sphere of beings, especially those who are suffering the most. So take a moment to check your motivation 
and try to set a pure intention for your meditation practice. Next, we imagine three people in the space in front of us. To our left is someone we love very dearly. Our mother, our father, our best friend, our children, a child. Usually best not to take a romantic partner. That can get a bit complicated. And we imagine sending loving kindness to this person. Imagine the person completely filled with loving kindness. in the form of a gentle golden light. Imagine the person's body and mind, completely filled with loving kindness, full to overflowing. Next, we practice sending loving kindness to the person in the middle, right in front of us. This is someone that we have difficulty with. Someone who irritates us. Someone who has harmed us in some way. Maybe they've stolen from us, or betrayed us, cheated us, lied to us disappointed us. So imagine this person also completely filled with this gentle golden light of loving kindness.
if we feel our feelings arising, negative feelings toward the person, begin again, flooding the person with this golden light of loving kindness, completely displacing all negativity, all feelings of anger or hurt. Imagine the person completely bathed in loving kindness. Next, we practice generating loving kindness to the person on our right. This person is a total stranger, someone we've never met before in our life. We don't know their name. We don't know anything about them. Eight billion people on planet Earth. Most of them we do not know. But they are also human beings, just like ourselves. Each one of them is also facing difficulties in life. So we practice generating loving kindness to all that person who represents all the strangers, all the people we do not know in the whole world. Imagine that person also completely filled with loving kindness.
Finally, we imagine all three people in front of us and we send loving kindness to all of them equally. Our natural tendency might be to send more loving kindness to our friend, our parent, our loved one. But in this case, we want to send loving kindness equally to all of the three people in front of us, friend, enemy, and stranger. So imagine all three of them completely filled with this gentle golden light of loving kindness, dazzling, radiant, displacing all negativity, filling them completely with love. Love and more love. And when you're ready, slowly open your eyes, maintaining your loving kindness for all. Feel the love coursing through your body. Feel the power of love in yourself, in your own experience. And imagine the power of generating loving kindness to one person is so valuable, so wholesome, so virtuous. But if we generate that kind of love to 8 billion people, it's 8 billion times more powerful, more valuable, more wholesome, more virtuous. Now, some people will naturally say, generating loving kindness to my friend, my relative, my loved one, was very easy. 
so natural. But sending loving kindness to someone who harmed me, that was really difficult. Well, yeah, in the beginning it is difficult. It's our sort of bad habit to return harm with harm. Uh, when people are nasty to us, it's sort of unthinkingly we might be nasty to them in return. But that's really the wrong way to go about it. That only makes the harm and nastiness double, twice as bad. So it's very easy to love those who are lovable. But it's very difficult to love those who are nasty, mean, cruel, annoying. Annoyance and irritation is a low grade of anger. So we need to be aware of that too. But in order to genu genuinely create a heart of love, we need to practice. And how can we practice if we don't have someone to practice on? One of my teachers, Goenka, used to say, if you want to learn swimming, you need a swimming pool. If you don't have a swimming pool, how are you going to learn to swim? So it's the same with loving kindness. If we don't have someone to practice on, someone who has been mean to us or sort of nasty with us, then we won't grow. We'll just stay the same. We won't be able to expand our loving heart. So in this case, we use the people who have been unpleasant to us as our opportunity an opportunity for generating loving kindness. You see? So although it's more difficult in the beginning, in the end, it starts to become natural. And it also has great practical benefit. For example, perhaps you have a coworker who's really hard to get along with. Maybe you have the boss from hell. But you have to go into a meeting with this person. And you're really afraid you might lose it, get upset, get angry. That could ruin your, your relationship, could even cost your job. So before going into that meeting, before that encounter, it's really practical to do this meditation. Generate loving kindness intentionally toward that person. Put them right in front of you. Surround them with loving kindness right before going into the meeting. Maybe on the bus on the way to the meeting. Then when you go in, you're filled with light. And where there is light, darkness cannot exist. Okay, of course, we all have flaws. We all have failings. We all fail to live up to our own expectations. But we also have within ourselves a capacity for love and light. And that's what we want to optimize. We want to maximize our capability for loving kindness. So love and compassion are related. In the Buddhist teachings, they come in a framework of the four divine abidings, the four Brahma Viharas. And these are loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity. What's the difference? Well, loving kindness is the wish that all beings be happy. May all beings be happy. May all beings be happy. May all beings be happy. Compassion in the Buddhist world is wishing all beings to be free from suffering. May they be free from suffering. May they be free from suffering. May they be free from suffering. So loving kindness and compassion are a pair. They work together. The third one is sympathetic joy. 
This means rejoicing in the good qualities and good fortune of others. Sometimes when we see someone get the job that we wanted, um, you know, team up with the partner we were hoping for, get the promotion we wanted, or get into the school we wanted to get into, we might feel really horrible. Well, that horrible feeling is jealousy, envy. It's a very ugly emotion. It's unpleasant for us, for ourselves. The way we deal with that is to generate the antidote to jealousy, which is this joyful um, joy, sympathetic joy, rejoicing in the qualities and the achievements of others. So when we see them get the promotion, even if it's the job we wanted, we see them getting into the school that we wanted to get into. Instead of feeling miserable, we can feel happy for them. This is a great opportunity. The fourth one is equanimity. Equanimity. This means developing a calm state of mind, no matter what we run into. Life is full of ups and downs. We can't avoid it. We get sick. We get some, yeah, we feel down sometimes. Uh, we run into obstacles. We lose, lose out sometimes. So what do we do about it? It doesn't help to sit around and feel sorry for ourselves. We can learn to be equanimous, equanimous, just serene and calm in all situations. So no matter what life throws us, good fortune or misfortune, we are fine. Whatever goes up comes down, whatever goes down comes up, we can handle. That's very practical to develop equanimity. Okay, to feel calm and serene in any circumstance. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about loving kindness too, actually the Buddhists don't limit it to human beings. They also include the animals, all the animals, including birds and insects, all of them. Okay, now this is a challenge with those biting insects, mosquitoes and so on, but hey, they all want happiness just like we do. They all want to avoid suffering just like we do. So we can include them in our meditation. Not just 8 billion human beings, but infinite sentient beings. Not only on this planet, but throughout the galaxy, throughout the universe. We can expand our loving kindness to all of them. No one is excluded. Imagine the power of this. It's incredible, right? Now, loving kindness is pure. Loving kindness is given, is expressed without any expectation of reward. Sometimes we run into people who put on a fake smile just to get what they want. We're not talking about that. We're talking about genuine love, genuine loving kindness. We also know that sometimes love is mixed with attachment. We love our children, we love our relatives, but often there's attachment mixed in there. Sometimes with a romantic partner, it can also be mixed with expectations. Getting some kind of happiness for ourselves. So that's not pure love. It's a bit tainted. So we want to continue practicing this meditation on loving kindness until we can feel pure, genuine love that expects nothing in return. Hmm. Yes. Okay. So I'd like to share one more meditation with you. Um, and this one is called Tong Len. Tong Len is a Tibetan term. Tong means to send, Len means to take. 
Now, in this meditation, what we do is to practice taking on the sufferings of the world and transforming them into their opposites, into positives. Okay? We take on all the problems of the world and then we transform them into their solutions. This is a little more advanced practice, but I think you can do it. So we imagine ourselves surrounded by infinite sentient beings. We can imagine them in a form of a human being to begin with, because that's easier. And then we imagine taking on all of their problems one by one and transforming them at a small point at our heart. Then we send out from that point at our heart, we send out the solution, the opposite. Okay, I'll guide you through this. Now remember, don't cling to the problem. We immediately transform it into its opposite. Okay? So again, sit comfortably with your back straight. If you like, you can put your hands in your lap with the right hand over the left and your thumbs touching. That forms a, a circle so that the winds can circulate, the winds of your body, the winds in the room. So you feel comfortable, but you don't fall asleep. Okay. Take a few breaths. Okay, we begin first with taking on all the poverty of sentient beings. Bringing it into a point at our heart and transforming it, sending it out in abundance. Okay, taking on all the poverty of the world and sending out abundance. We can align this with our breathing. So as we're breathing in, we're taking in this particular misfortune. And when we breathe out, we breathe out this particular good fortune. Next, we take on all the hunger of the world and send out all good things to eat. We take on all the thirst of the world and send out all good things to drink. Pure water, whatever is good to drink.
We take on all the illness in the world and send out good health. We take on all the oppression in the world and send out freedom. We take on all the fear in the world. Send out courage. We take on all the anger in the world. Send out patience. We take on all the greed in the world, send out contentment. We take on all the ignorance in the world, send out wisdom,
We take on all the loneliness of sentient beings and send them friendship. We take on all the conflicts of the world and send out peace. And finally, we take on all the miseries of the world and send out happiness. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. May all beings be free from suffering. Thank you. Thank you. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you so much, Yenda. Um, Bapak dan Ibu hadirin, kami persilahkan jika ingin mengajukan pertanyaan tertulis bisa di chat. Jika ingin mengajukan langsung dalam bahasa Inggris ke Ian Latarma, silahkan juga. Uh, yang tertulis dalam bahasa Indonesia nanti akan diterjemahkan oleh Yudi dan saya untuk disampaikan kepada Ian Latarma. Silahkan. Kami punya waktu kurang lebih 15 menit. Silahkan kalau ada yang mau ikan. Atau juga mau sharing pengalamannya dengan meditasi ini. Ibu Dayan Butler. Would you like to start? Okay. <laughs> Selamat pagi. Good morning. Good afternoon. Venerable Karma Lekte Trimakasi. Thank you so much for joining us at the Bourbador Writers and Cultural Festival from San Diego, even though I know you live now in Hawaii, back to your root. 
if you can tell us a little bit about your peace center and the idea, and then maybe if Ibu, uh, uh, <laughs> Ibu Yatim Debra, is a member of the Kabahasa Indonesia, apa sedikit mengenai the Peace Institute in Hawaii. Thank you. Terima kasih. Yes, well, um, after teaching at the university for 25 years, I'm now about to retire and give back to the earth and the community um, in Hawaii. And of course, it's not difficult to grow things in Hawaii. It's like Indonesia, everything grows sort of naturally. So we want to create a space of peace where we can learn meditation, practice meditation together, where we can learn Tai Chi, yoga, uh, conflict resolution skills, and whatever people have to offer, Hawaiian healing herbs, different healing technologies, and learn to live together in peace and harmony, especially harmony with the earth. Of course, in Hawaii, it's a colonized uh, you know, country, and so there are many dissatisfactions, many political problems, and the earth has pretty much been trashed by corporate capitalism. And now we're in the process of trying to restore the land um, after massive sugarcane and pineapple production. So I planted about 100 papaya trees and 75 plumeria trees, lots of avocado, mango, guava, passion fruit, everything. And so um, it's just a really quiet little center with just a few of us staying, uh, but it's open to everyone. We have an active volunteer program. So people come out whenever they have free time and they can plant a tree or weed the grass or uh, play in the dirt and enjoy the fresh air and freedom of being outside um, four walls. <laughs> so it's really nice. Yeah, you can see our website actually, hawaii.sakedita.org. Okay, I'll just translate briefly, uh, Yenla. Jadi Ibu uh, Ibu Bikuni saat ini membuka sebuah center pusat uh, healing, healing kembalikan, uh, me menyumbang kembali kepada bumi di Hawaii. Jadi menurut beliau itu Hawaii sebuah lokasi yang di, dijajah sebetulnya diambil alih secara paksa uh, dijadikan pusat produksi uh, 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 apa cane sugar cane pusat produksi gula dan dan nanas dan kemudian uh, itu sangat dikuasai oleh sifat kapitalisme dengan adanya center ini. Anda semua diundang untuk volunteer di situ. Kita bisa menanam pohon pepaya, pohon mango, mangga, mangga pohon, pohon um, apa, uh, pisang, dan kemudian kita bisa mengembalikan lagi uh, kekuatan bagi ibu bumi, dan juga kita bisa belajar meditasi, tai chi, yoga di sana bersama-sama. Beliau sudah 25 tahun. Um, mengajar di universitas dan sekarang waktunya untuk melepaskan diri dari itu dan beliau mengajak kita semua untuk mencari kebebasan di pusat beliau di Hawaii. Thank you, Yena. Thank you, Ibu Dayan Butler. Um, there is one question from. There are several questions. There's one question from uh, from Nataya Bagia, uh, Yena. Why do I feel really sad now? I feel like crying. Is this normal? Hmm. Well, actually, you know, I think it might be a sign of your great compassion. You know, sometimes we are just like children. We behave like children just playing around when there's so many miseries in the world and we don't even notice, we don't even care. There was one Lama in Tibet who always cried because he thought about the sufferings of sentient beings. Now, we don't have to go to that extent, actually. There are many joys in the world. Buddhism isn't just um, about suffering, actually. It's about relieving suffering, right? Alleviating suffering. So 
But if we feel sad, it shows that we have compassion in our hearts, that we're not ignoring the sufferings of the world. I think it's a good sign. Yeah. Okay. One time I asked, actually, one time I asked a Lama, this is maybe 40 years, 50 years ago. I said, you know, I often cry. If someone's mean to me, I cry. You know, if I miss my teacher, I cry. If someone's mean to me, I cry. What is this crying? And my teacher said, if you cry when someone's mean to you, that's self-concern. If you cry when you miss your teacher, that may be attachment. But if you cry when you think about the sufferings, the sufferings of sentient beings, that's compassion. So, yeah. But cheer up. <laughs> there are solutions to all of this, no problem. So, and this meditation of transforming negative emotions into their opposites is very helpful. Loving kindness is very helpful. Good question. Thank you. Uh, Ibu Nataya sudah terbaik. Yes, she said thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, dari Yudi. Yudi mau bacakan. Masih mute. Yeah. Uh, oh, ya. Yeah. Okay. Dari Ramdan, apakah selalu binary seperti itu? Marah dilawan dengan wisdom? Bukankah hidup lebih sering abu-abu, bukan hitam putih? So, I'll, I'll do a little translation. Uh, Yanla, the question is from uh, Bapak Ramdan, Ramdan Malik. He said, is it always binary like that? Is is anger always um, opposed? Is anger always overcome by wisdom? Is life always isn't life uh, more gray instead of black and white? Well, that's a that's also a very good observation because of course our emotions are not completely binary. It's a spectrum, right? Sometimes we're very sad. Sometimes we're just a little bit sad. Sometimes we're very happy. Sometimes we're just a little bit happy. So, of course, there's a whole spectrum. And I think what Buddhism has to offer here is to become aware of our emotions. Okay, right now I'm feeling a little bit sad. Right now I'm feeling a little bit angry. Um, and so on. But now it's really good to be aware of our emotions because then we can deal with them. For example, if we feel a little bit of irritation, that is a kind of low-grade anger. If we don't take care of it, it can grow and we can have an outburst. We can lose our temper out of control. So it's very good to be aware of the emotion of irritation as it grows in us. Also, it can be attachment, right? Sometimes we can feed our attachment. Now in the United States, we're working up until the holiday season. Actually, it's just about consumerism in many cases. And people are just beginning to buy, buy, buy stuff they don't even need. And so it's very good to be aware of the emotion of greed as it starts to arise. Right? It doesn't come all at once, full blown all at once. But if we don't attend to it, pay attention to it, it can grow out of control. So we just imagine this binary just to make it simple. But we, of course, we know that emotions are a whole range, a whole spectrum and many variations too. So that's, you're absolutely right on that. Thank you, Yenna. Untuk Pak Ram, Ramdan, jadi uh, jawabannya adalah memang hidup tidak binary, tidak hitam dan putih. Kita selalu berada di dalam spektrum, tapi kita harus selalu sadar akan uh, saat ini sedang merasa uh, apa uh, kesal pada seseorang. Kesal itu adalah kemarahan masih dalam level rendah. Andaikan kita tidak kelola, kemarahan itu bisa 
tumbuh-tumbuh-tumbuh menjadi kemarahan uh, 100% dan lalu kita akan uh, uh, apa, menghantam orang itu dengan kemarahan kita dan itu akan sangat mengganggu bagi semua orang. Ibu Yenla mengingatkan bahwa saat ini sedang masuk ke musim liburan hari eh, tanggal Desember Desember tanggal 25 adalah hari Natal bagi sebagian besar orang di Amerika sebagian orang di Amerika tetapi itu sebetulnya adalah suatu konsep kapitalisme yang sudah hampir-hampir tidak terkendali orang membeli beli beli barang-barang yang sangat tidak dibutuhkan hanya untuk memenuhi masa liburan ini yang dianggap liburan sakral jadi itu adalah suatu kondisi juga yang diingatkan beliau. Jadi kita mengendalikan ketika masih kecil spektrumnya, jangan sampai dia menjadi hitam dan putih sebagaimana tadi Pak Ram dan ingatkan. Terima kasih untuk observasi itu. Thank you, Yana. Uh, Yudi mau membacakan pertanyaan. Question but not about the topic. Uh, uh, Ibu Hayanti, very interested with your activity in Hawaii. Uh, she asked uh, how How to join? If you want, if you want to join your activity uh, in your weekend, but you are in Hawaii. Could you please repeat the question? Uh, Ibu Haryanti want to join your activity uh, in Hawaii. Oh, okay. How to join? Welcome. Yes, you're welcome. Um, we are. We have very simple accommodations. Mostly, it's like camping out. Um, <clears throat> we don't have electricity. We have solar, um, but it's very sort of um, <clears throat> earthy. And so, but we welcome visitors. So, if you come to Hawaii, please feel free. Welcome to visit us. I think you'll find it's very much like Indonesia, actually. Yeah. The landscape and the climate is very similar to Indonesia, a little bit cooler. So very it's, so. yeah, very comfortable. <laughs> Silakan mute yang berikutnya. Um, uh, Silakan. Oh, uh, some appreciation from Rika. Uh, more joyful after the meditation. I feel like I'm hugging with other people. Thank you so much for the meditation and spending. Yes, I think. Meditation on loving kindness makes our heart happy. So it's it's really um, a good antidote to anything that's bothering us. It's a wonderful practice. So we can practice when we get up in the morning, you know. We can begin by watching our breathing and then generating loving kindness. And again, before we go to sleep at night, We can calm down, sit for a few minutes, watch our breathing, and then generate loving kindness to all living beings. And we'll have a very nice, peaceful sleep. Okay. Uh, and on that note, uh, thank you very much, Yenla, for this wonderful session on this third day of the Borobudur cultural writers and cultural festival i'm afraid time is almost up we have one minute left would you like to um, leave us with a few wise words to strengthen and fortify us for the rest of the day yes of course there's so much to say and our time is so short but it's been a joy to be with all of you today Um, I'd like to end by saying that in Sanskrit, the word for loving kindness is Maitri. Uh, many of you know because Bahasa Indonesia has many Sanskrit words. So Maitri is the word for loving kindness. And also the name of the future Buddha is also Maitreya, meaning loving kindness. 
So this is a good thing. We make a connection with Buddha Maitreya. If we don't get enlightened in this lifetime, we can hope to be reborn at the time of Buddha Maitreya. So I'll just end with a few words from His Holiness Dalai Lama. His favorite prayer, which is from Shanti Deva, who came to Indonesia, long to Java, long time, Sumatra, actually, long time ago. He says, For as long as space remains, for as long as sentient beings remain, until then, may I too remain to dispel the miseries of the world. So we take joy in our meditation practice and our Dharma discussion, and then we share the merit of this practice with all sentient beings throughout space and time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Selesai sesi meditasi kita yang hari ketiga dalam BWJF. Selamat salam bahagia sampai jumpa dalam meditasi esok pagi. Salam.